Hi, I'm Ram Gopal from PresentationProcess.com. In this video, you will learn how to create animated timeline with PowerPoint Morph Transition. The beautiful animated timeline you will learn to create today looks like this. As you can see here, we talk about four events along a timeline and you can see that there are four markers along the timeline with relevant photos. Here I have used the photos of flowers and you can use any other photo that is relevant to the timeline that you're describing. The best part is you can extend this graphic to as many events as you want. All you need to do is to make a duplicate of this graphic, replace these with new set of photos and you can keep on continuing the various events along a timeline. Anyway, let us see how to present this simple yet beautiful morph transition based timeline diagram. On the first click, I bring in details regarding the first event like this. Can you see here? This one has grown in size, drawing the viewer's attention to event one. Then on a click, the second one grows and then event two is highlighted. Then we highlight event three and then we highlight event four. It's a very simple timeline. As you can see here, we are able to present each event along the timeline in a subtle yet very attractive way. Let us see how to create this beautiful yet easy timeline graphic using Morph Transition. I'm going to start this tutorial from this point forward. I'm not going to show you how to create these markers because I've already shown you how to do this in my last video about animated roadmap with PowerPoint Morph Transition where I showed you this particular marker and how to create it and fill it with numbers. All you need to do is to select that particular marker and then replace instead of the numbers with a simple photo that you already have. So this is a shape which is created using a circle inside a teardrop which is rotated to 135 degrees. And this one is nothing but a simple rectangular shape with gray gradient. As far as creating these shapes is concerned, there is not really much to learn. The real difference comes in applying morph transition by increasing the size of each of these markers. The first thing I'm going to do is to go to thumbnails view and then show you exactly what I'm doing here on this side. The first thing I'm going to do is to right click, go to duplicate slide. Now I'm going to increase the size of the first marker by selecting this. If you remember, I've already grouped both these elements together. That is the teardrop shape and the oval shape which is filled with picture are all grouped together. Now I'm going to right click and go to size and position option. When I do that, I get this pane here. I'm going to go to lock aspect ratio and I'm going to click so I can expand this in the same proportion. Then I'm going to say scale height and width by 125%. Now we have got this in larger size. Now I'm going to select this shape and I'm going to use up arrow key to move the shape in the right position. Now using the up arrow key ensures that I don't move this object anywhere on the sides. I'm just moving it straight up. And I can also control the way in which I make the movement. As you can see here, I stop it exactly at the point where the tip of the steer drop shape touches this line. Now I've got my first event in place. I'm going to copy the label that I've already written in the earlier example and I'm going to place that here. I don't really want to waste your time showing you how exactly to create this. I've used two text boxes to create this one and that explains whatever that happens in event one. Now I'm going to make a copy of this by right clicking and using duplicate slide option. Now, if you want, you can always remove the title. In this case, I'm going to say, I don't really want the title. I'm going to delete and I'm going to do that again because this is a placeholder. And I'm going to do that for this one as well because we don't really want this to be a disturbance for showing you the different events. So we have got this done. Now we've got our duplicate in place. I'm going to increase the size of this the same way as I did before. I'm going to select this, go to the third option here called size and properties, and I'm going to go to lock aspect ratio, and I'm going to use the same 125%. And these are some small, simple things that you need to keep in mind that we are going to use the same scaling proportion, and we are going to use the same ratio. And now we have got this done. 
Now we are going to click outside once. Otherwise, when we use the up arrow, you would see that the size and position keeps increasing and that is not really we want. So we want to select this again and then we use the same up arrow to position it exactly in the place where it touches the line. So we've got this in place and I'm going to take the same one as the previous one and I'm going to copy and place it here. I'm going to hold the control button down as I place this and you can see that I have my smart guide that allows me to place it exactly below the earlier uh, marker. I'm going to say this is event two and I'm going to change this to event two. And you continue doing this for the remaining ones as well. All you need to do every time is duplicate this slide Increase the size of this by 125%. Use your up arrow key to place them in position and then you add the description for the additional events. So that is how you complete all the four events. Once it is done, then all you need to do is to go to thumbnails view and leaving the first one aside, from the next one onwards, you select all the various slides that you've created by duplicating one after another, and then go to transitions and use morph transition. That is all you need to do, and the rest will be taken care of by PowerPoint. That way, if you go to the first one, there is no transition whatsoever, and then on a click, you can see that this growth has happened, and then you have the events explanation happening and then we continue doing so for the next set of events. So that is how you create this beautiful four events along a timeline graphic using morph transition. Now talking about timelines, especially animated timelines, we have got a whole bunch of creative options available in comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle. The best part is we have gone way beyond the basic timelines that you normally see and we have used metaphors and analogies. Take a look at this one. Here we talk about our growth over the years and the metaphor that we have used is this one where we show the beginning of a business and then the next year or whatever year that you want to use as a marker here. And then you can see that the growth along the various stages is very beautifully done using the metaphor of a plant growing. Another example is this one where we've used a very different metaphor. Here we show the first stage, which is more like a baby. And then at each stage, we show the growth of the company or the growth of the project or the growth of the product using a different metaphor like this. Another example is this one where we show the same example of using a seed growing into a tree, but this time we want to show the whole thing using a beautiful animation. First, we show the initial stage, that is you, your text about the seed. Then on a click, you can see that we have planted that seed and this is the initial stage. And then the next stage where we have all the things blooming and this is the final stage. And you can talk about whatever explanation you want to write here. Then we have another example where we talk about six points along the journey. First, we talk about the first point and see how this simple animation moves the button from here to here. And then we talk about the second event, the third event, the fourth event, the fifth event, and the final event. Can you see here, this almost shows that the various events are flowing from one to the next. Another example is this one where we talk about five points along the road. On the first click, we have this point here, this marker, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. Now, the best thing about using templates like this is they are totally extendable. If you want to add one more event along the timeline, all you need to do is to select these elements here which is the marker and the associated text and move it somewhere closer like this one and then make a copy of this by pressing Control D and then place it here maybe to show that we have another event and then I'm going to call this as say number six and then you can see that I don't really have to do anything. Everything is already done for me and the new event also has the associated animation. So that is as easy as it gets when it comes to building your slides. Another example is this one where we talk about the roadmap graphic with different events shown here. As you can see here, it's a 3D perspective kind of a graphic. The last example is this one 
where we use an exciting custom animation like this. As you can see here, each marker has an exciting custom animation and these kind of custom animations come in quite handy, especially when you want to create a video where you want to talk about each of the events along the timeline. And the thing is, all these animations, all these graphics are already done for you in comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle. All you need to do to incorporate these slides into your own presentation is just to copy and replace sample text with your own text. Your slides get ready in no time. It is the smartest way to create professional quality slides without having to spend a lot of time and effort. I will leave a link to this useful product in the description box below the video. Please click on the link and know more about this product. Finally, if you want to receive exclusive PowerPoint tips and tricks that I share only with my email subscribers, please click on the link here, join our newsletter called Success by PowerPoint. The PowerPoint tips and tricks that I share in this newsletter are so simple and practical that you can use these tricks in your next presentation. So please click on the link here, join the newsletter and I will see you in the next video.